Recently, I bought and reviewed the cheapest airbrush kit on Amazon, and I was pleasantly surprised by it. Whilst buying that, I also saw a cheap, rechargeable, battery-operated airbrush, and I thought, there's no way that this can be good enough. So I thought I'd pick one up, test it, and tell you what I think. This one cost me £30, the same price as the other one I reviewed. So with very low expectations, I opened it up to find a rechargeable compressor, the airbrush with removable cup, a charging cable, a small pipette, and a small wrench to remove the nozzle. This is a really beginner friendly kit in that you can't really get anything wrong. You screw on the cup to the airbrush and then screw the airbrush to the compressor. That's it. The charging cable is a good length with a USB connector on one end and a barrel connector on the other. It plugs directly into the side of the compressor and there's even a light in the USB plug which glows green when it's fully charged and red whilst it's charging. You switch on the compressor by pressing the button on the side and this begins pumping compressed air through the airbrush immediately. This is a single action airbrush where you have no control over the air but can control the flow of paint by pulling back on the trigger. The air pressure is relatively low in this kit and it is fixed. It states a maximum of 25 psi, however from experience I'd say it's probably nearer 20 psi. Once you're done just press the button again to switch it off. One of the really good points of this kit is the noise level, it's really quiet. If you saw my other airbrush review I showed the decibel level with an app. The other unit had a level of 76 decibels which was a little quieter than a hairdryer on full. This one is much quieter at 67 decibels and that makes it perfect for some late night priming when everyone's asleep. Breaking down the airbrush for a deep clean is simple enough by screwing off the needle protector, screwing off the nozzle cap, unscrewing the rear of the brush and removing the needle and removing the cup to get in and clean it. You can definitely feel that there have been some corners cut on quality when it comes to the airbrush, however at this price point it is to be expected. When assembling again, push the needle all the way forward into the nozzle and then screw tight the clamp by hand. This ensures the needle seals against the nozzle and stops any spattering of the paint. This particular airbrush also comes with an adjustable end stop which means you can set the max distance that the needle travels and this helps newer users from blasting too much paint out while they're getting used to using it. Once all set up, I tried some Vallejo Matte Black Primer through it just to test how it performed without ruining anything too important, so I primed a resin base. Because of the lower pressure of this unit, I would recommend thinning your paint a little more than you would with higher pressure compressors. That said, this flowed really well, I had control over the level of paint being sprayed and it did the job I needed it to do. Cleaning can be a little more awkward with the compressor attached as I'm used to having a quick connector to a hose and just disconnecting it. However, here I flushed it through into a cleaning pot which I definitely recommend and it was ready to go again. Next up I decided to try some base coating onto a miniature and here I tried something a little different. I took Screamer Pink from Citadel and sprayed it from the bottom of the model up over to act as a shadow colour and then took Avalon Sunset Yellow again by Citadel and sprayed it from above. This seemed to work without any issues and I was happy with how it performed. Would I be able to use it to paint a whole army? Well, why not subscribe to find out if I can in a future upcoming video. Overall, what were my thoughts? Well, from a pro perspective, the noise level. It's super quiet in comparison to any other airbrush compressor I've used and that's great for using it when it's late. The design means it's easier to just put the airbrush down when you're not using it and the heavier compressor makes it stable. Speaking of the heavier compressor, the total unit weighs 304 grams and whilst I thought it would be uncomfortable to use, it actually wasn't so bad and especially if you're not used to using an airbrush anyway. A full charge of the battery lasts approximately 60 minutes of air, however you will be turning it on and off between paint models, so 60 minutes can actually be more time than you'd initially think in practical terms. Charging it from flat to fully charged takes about 2 hours, which isn't terrible, but it can be a bit of a pain if you run out mid painting session, so remember to keep it charged up. The downsides? The pressure is probably a little too low to do any detail work, so don't think you'll be painting super fine lines with this. However, that's not really why I'd recommend this anyway. One thing that remains to be seen is the lifespan of the unit. I've been using it for a few months now to test it, and it's been fine so far. I have not seen any drop off in pressure as the battery life drains, 
However, I have been keeping it topped up rather than using it until it's completely drained. So maybe towards the last bits of power, it may do that. So watch out for it. Technically, if you get the right connection adapter, you could use a better airbrush with this. However, as I don't have the right connector, I haven't tested it. But just be aware that you need to take out the air valve from the airbrush if it's used with the dual action one. This will need to have a single action airbrush attached. For £30, this is a nice addition to my painting tools. I can pry them late at night, it takes up no room on my desk, and as an introduction to airbrushing, it's actually not a bad place to start. Its cordless portability too is great for being able to take it outdoors. Is it as good as my more expensive compressor and tank with my better quality airbrush? No, it's not. And I'd even go so far as to say the £30 compressor and airbrush I reviewed recently is again better. However, if space and noise are considerations and you just want something for basic priming and base coating, you'll be pretty happy with this. i link below to the one I bought on Amazon and please be aware that it will be my affiliate link. Also, I have no control over pricing, so you may find that the prices go up and down depending upon stocks and popularity. However, it was £30.32 when I purchased it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching my video, I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month, and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server, it will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now.